Well, it's a good question. It's important in different ways for different people. I should be clear, it's important for me. It's a basic physiological system. It's the way the body works. We believe the system started with animal evolution. That's about 500 million years ago. And the importance of this type of knowledge, to me, is it, its permanence. Knowledge doesn't go backwards, so it's true now. It'll be true in a hundred years' time. I hope it'll be true in a million years' time. And that, for me, is very satisfying, and that's why we do the work. Now, it is fair to say that hypoxia is a complication of diseases. So there is a possibility, and indeed there have been medicines that have been made around this system. But to be clear, even though I'm a clinical scientist, I am a doctor, the motivation for the work was simply finding it out. Well, apart from, as I say, the, the fact I believe it's true, and it explains uh, a lot of the ways in which the body all animal bodies respond and defend themselves against low oxygen. Apart from that, yes, there are new medicines, um, medicines that tune up this system to treat diseases such as anemia that are suffered by kidney patients and certain types of cancer where this system is overactive to support the tumour and obviously taking the tumour's support away uh, would be uh, a bad thing for the cancer and a good thing for you and I. Well, one of the interesting things about today's uh, symposium is its focus on immunology. And we've known that uh, inflamed tissues which harbour immune cells often have very low oxygen because the cells consume the oxygen. And it's not been very clear what that means for the outcome of immunity and inflammation. So I talked a little bit about some of our own work on that, that that establishes that this oxygen sensing system is indeed activated by uh, in, in these circumstances and that does have effects on the way the immune system works. I should say the immune system is, is very complicated so predicting these effects in any human situation is, is not straightforward but that was one of the horizons we touched on and the fact that I think just controlling oxygen as precisely as needs be in the human body is very, very demanding and there will be new systems which we have not yet discovered. I talked a little bit about that in the lecture. We do not know the whole truth. We probably don't know the majority of the truth. We know a minority or even a small minority of the truth, that's the progress of science. Uh, people denigrate incremental work, but actually all science is incremental. Well, the, the first thing, uh, as we said to the students in the lecture, you must have your own question. It must be distinct. The whole world will advise you not to address that question but to do one that other people think is important. But you must resist that. You must have your own thing. Think about it, the world's thousands and thousands of scientists, the chance of you making a key contribution against thousands of others is slight. So it must be your own question. And then I think you've got a bit lucky, a lot of luck in it. Well, that's what I've lectured, and that was my impression that um, if we had a team of politicians visiting the Institute of Molecular Medicine, the director who did support my work, Sir David Weatherall, would always put my lab on for them to see. And somehow I usually got missed off. They said, well, we don't really need to see the hypoxia biology lab. We don't really know what that is. So, yes, it, it wasn't fashionable when we started. and. As I said, this is, this is pervasive in science. We follow fashion like all other human beings follow fashion and that leads to overcrowding of fields and problems in too many people trying to solve the same problem or indeed trying to pro solve a problem that isn't really soluble. So we were fortunate in avoiding that, that trap. 
Well, indeed, I've, I've, I've friends here, and in particular Panu Yakula, who, who, who brought me kindly from the airport today, so I got here on time. Panu was an important part of the story in the lab in, in, in the late um, 90s, early 2000s, in uh, doing some of the biochemistry that we did on the uh, prolyl hydroxylase system, which, which was a key part of the story. Very good to see Panu today.